that's the hardened weld showing its ugly face. Hey YouTube guys and gals, it's another video from the wet coast. It's beautiful out today. I'm gonna to take advantage of the weather and the heat to get something done on my flat deck trailer that it really, really needs. And I learned this the hard way. I'm gonna install this 8,500 pound winch into a box and onto the actual trailer itself to help loading with vehicles. I loaded my Maverick onto the trailer a few weeks ago and I had to do it with a come along and it took forever because I would strap it with a chain so it wouldn't roll back, ratchet another four feet and repeat until I finally got the car loaded up the ramps and onto the flat deck. So with this winch, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take these two pieces of angle iron. I'm gonna weld it across the triangular section of the trailer there. That will support the box. I'm gonna take this piece of two by three, three sixteenths inch tubing, cut it in half and turn it into a pair of uprights that I go from this support here on the trailer down to the frame and then mount the winch inside the box. The only thing that'll be showing will be the fair lead on this side. It'll be easy access and I can open up the box when it's on there. The battery that powers the winch is gonna be in there. The winch will be in there. It's all gonna be protected from the elements and it'll have a lock on it. Time to get started. So that's the mock-up of the way it's going to look. Just be the fair lead at the back there. I'm gonna cut a hole in the box for the cable to slip through. The winch will be mounted inside. Should be a fairly simple task. I've got enough two by three rectangular tubing to do two uprights. Should work great. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean off this skanky old piece of metal I've got. I'm just gonna run the grinder over it with a flapper disc just to get all that rusty scale off. Cut it in half, bevel the cuts so I can weld those areas, and then I've got to measure out some holes for the winch mount. All right, so these two uprights are gonna be welded to the trailer, approximately here and here. And that is gonna act as the base plate for the winch. I will weld it up against the trailer itself. It's gonna be nice and secure. All right, so the next thing I need to do now is to take this distance between that hole and that hole. There's one on both sides, as you can see. Transfer that distance there, drill a hole there, and then I'll be able to tack weld these two uprights onto the trailer, and then I'll be able to temporarily hang the winch on the trailer itself and sort of get an idea for the positioning of the box and the rest of the stuff.
All right, so that's kind of the way it's gonna be. Welded up here, welded down the sides here. It'll be the wall of the box, and then the winch will be bolted in on the top one, and then through holes drilled in the frame, the winch will be bolted to that on the bottom. These are grade five bolts. They have a tensile strength of about, I don't know, 4,000, 5,000 pounds. Plenty of holding strength for the winch because all of the, all of the strain is going to be pulling the winch that way as the car gets pulled onto the trailer. So I don't have to worry too much about shear, shearing on these bolts or anything like that. It's gonna be plenty strong. What I'm gonna do now is clamp them in place, just do some final measurements to make sure everything lines up properly. And then I'm going to mark it with a marker because I need to grind the paint off of the trailer frame so I can do a proper weld on it. And I'd probably just tack it in place first and then hang the winch and see how everything looks before I do a final pass on the welder. I want to get to it now. So one last thing I wanna do before I tack these on is I'm gonna sleeve these holes. Right now I've just drilled them out to be big enough for a 3 8 bolt, but I'm gonna take this bit of tubing and I'm gonna cut the lengths, I'm gonna drill the holes out and I'm gonna sleeve them so there's a bit more strength. So by doing this, it'll help prevent the long section of the rectangular tube from crushing under the pinching of the bolts. Excellent. So I got the TIG welder out and I just did a fusion weld on these tubes into the rectangular tube. Didn't have the camera running, sorry. I'm gonna grind these down and then I can tack weld them to the trailer. All right, I am done for today and I'm pretty happy with the progress. I have tack welded the winch plate or the winch supports onto the trailer. I've got the fair lead where I want it to be and this these two bolts go straight through and they're gonna hold the fair lead in place as well as the two bolts on this top part of the winch. Uh, I still have to drill the through holes in the trailer frame but that's gonna be very really easy because I've sleeved these holes and the drill will just go right through there like a guide. 
Uh, I can't quite weld it on yet because I have to get under the back here and remove a wire or I'm going to set fire to that. Probably do that tomorrow. Not setting fire to it, but the welding. Anyways, tomorrow's another day. I'll get to it then. Well, it's another day in the shop and I'm going to continue working on the trailer winch install. I'm going to do some more welding and some painting to make it rust proof. Before I start drilling and welding, I have to get un under the back here and move that trailer wire that's out of the way. It's a lighting wire. It runs right along here. Oh, it's going to catch on fire. And that doesn't do anybody any good. I'm going to drill these through the frame and check the winch fit before I actually commit myself to welding this. Perfect. Holes are perfectly aligned, so now I can start welding. That ain't going anywhere. How oh, that's hot. I think that the last thing I'm gonna do to secure these uprights a little bit more is just put a couple of caps on here. It'll provide a bit of bit of a wedge against being pulled that way. I I don't think this is gonna move. I've got four bolts or two bolts at least holding the winch to the trailer, pinning the uprights. I welded the crap out of it. This isn't going anywhere. But I will put a couple of caps on there help keep the weather out as well i'll leave the bottoms open just for the allow draining if water does get up in there time to cut a bit a couple of bits of metal So I'm not particularly happy with this. You can see after grinding, I've got a seam there. So I didn't get very good penetration with my weld. Same on this side. So I'm gonna bump up the heat and slow down the wire feed and do it again. But I think first I'm gonna grind a slot along that line and that way I can weld into it. lot has been ground. I'm going to fill those suckers with weld and then grind it flat and it should be good to go. I am much happier with that. Looks almost like I know what I'm doing now. Like I've said before, if you can't be a good welder, you better be a good grinder. Not a euphemism. All right, so this is going pretty good. I need to get the first box brace welded across the frame there, tack it to the winch supports, and then figure out where the box is gonna go in relation to the winch. It might not be dead center to the trailer, and that's because of the size of the winch and the battery I'm using, and I'll show you what that looks like. So this is the Deep Cycle RV Marine battery that I'm gonna use to power the winch. It's gonna reside in the box that sits on the trailer. It's a group 24 battery so it's not too big it's not too small it should be adequate to the job it'll charge off of the tow vehicle when the trailer is connected so whenever i get to a job i want to do where i've got to pull a vehicle onto the trailer it should have enough juice to run the winch and do it but i need to make sure it's going to fit beside the winch in the box i gotta lay that out
This actually lines up pretty good. It's pretty much dead center. There's a bit more room than I thought. You see the battery's gonna sit on the left here. The winch sits in the center of the box. I'll have a little bit of room on the side here for tools if I need to. So this is actually gonna work out pretty good. Now I'm gonna mark and punch some holes, cut the supports, get them welded to the frame. That's what she's gonna look like. The front and rear box supports are now welded on. I just need to transfer the holes for the winch support into the box and test fit the winch. This is a transfer punch and this is a perfect tool for what I need to do next is I need to know where to drill the hole in the box. Now, obviously with this hole here in the box on the back, I can just run the drill through that hole all the way through. But underneath the trailer, I can't do that. So what I'll do is I put the transfer punch in, give it a smack with a hammer, and that's going to put a witness mark and a little dent on the box. I can pull the box off and drill a hole, and it's going to align perfectly. These center punches, or these transfer punches are super cheap. You can buy a box of a bunch of different sizes for about 20 bucks. I'll put a link in the description. It's a great tool to have, cheap to have. They do come in handy occasionally. Very handy. bigger hole here so I can get the drill seated. I also need to cut a hole out here for the winch line. So I'll do that now while I've got this box out. Actually, I'll get the holes drilled, get it lined up, semi-bolted in, mark the hole, cut the hole. Don't want to forget that. It's kind of important. I've cut the cable hole in the box. I've got the holes for the winch done and it's time to test fit. So I think I'm done for the day. I've got other things I got to do. I'm really happy with my progress, although I have noticed one thing that I'm going to have to address that is a problem. The width of the spool is wider than the supports I've put in. Um, not necessarily a problem, but what I'm going to need to do is open up the box a bit more and I'll put some type of ultra high density molecular weight plastic strips on there just to allow the cable to slide over it. Otherwise it's gonna chew into the metal supports. The winch is hanging off the top two bolts. I've got lots of room for the battery. I know I've got room for the control box. I've got room over there for some tools. Looks like this is gonna work great. It's not gonna be a very frequently used item, but I do wanna build it right. So the next thing to do tomorrow is 
put a couple of cross supports, especially underneath the battery area here, bolt the box down to the cross members. But before I do that, I need to paint the cross members as well as the reinforcement uprights there so they don't rust and look gross. And then I've got to do the wiring. But that's future Chris's problem. Well, it's another day and I'm going to continue with the trailer winch project and I'm going to address a problem of my own making and I'll show you what that is. So when the winch is inside the box and mounted like this, except inside a box, I realized that the spool is a fair bit wider than, what, than the uprights that I've made. Uh, this could be a minor problem because when the cable is being pulled in and the winch wants to wind the cable to the outer edges of the spool, the cable is going to ride along that edge there. So what I'm going to do is take some of this one and a half inch flat plate that I bought and I'm going to notch this upright on both sides at an angle so that it's kind of pointing to the outside. So it's going to lessen the pulling on the cable and any abrasion. I originally thought yesterday that I was going to be just putting in some ultra high molecular weight plastic, which is super slippery stuff. But then I also thought that's just going to make this opening even smaller, which is probably not a good idea. So I'm going to get to it. I'm going to notch on either corner, put an angle in, weld it up, and that should be good enough. Let's round about the top of the spool here and here. I'll need to notch it more than three inches, two inches maybe. That'll be good. So good on the level here. Um, yeah. Alright, that looks a lot better. Well, that's going to be it for me today. I've got a coat of paint on there to protect the bare metal from rust. I'm going to do another coat of paint with a... This is a 
a high temperature rust-oleum or trim clad product it's a little bit brown and it doesn't turn really black until i apply high heat to it so i'm going to put an actual coat of black paint on it and give it an extra coat as well for more protection i realized in my haste to get the painting done is i forgot to put a cross brace across between these two supports for the battery I need to tie the battery down to something secure, more secure than a thin piece of sheet metal that makes up the box anyways. Uh, but that's an easy fix. Just do a quick little bit of grinding, a little bit of welding, a little more painting, and that'll be done. But that's it for today. I'll get back to it tomorrow or the day after and get this project finished and tested. But it's moving along pretty good, and I'm happy with the result so far. So I went ahead and gave the cross supports for the toolbox another coat of paint. This is a flat black paint, trim clad, rust-oleum, same kind of stuff. And I, while I had planned on actually welding in a strap across the bottom here to support this battery box I've got, I realized that the battery box mounting holes coincided with the edges of the supports that I welded in here. So really all I need to do is just weld on some tabs, drill some holes, these cross members are gonna be plenty strong enough to hold on to that battery. Saves me a bit of work. So I'm gonna cut those tabs now, weld them on, give them a kiss of paint, and then I can get to mounting the toolbox, which is a major milestone. All right, so I've got the tabs welded where I want them to be. I ran full beads on the bottom of the tabs, but the top, I gotta to drill holes in there. So I don't wanna be drilling through too much weld bead. It's really hard to drill through because the steel hardens due to the heat. But they're in the right place. Also don't want to ground down a lot of stuff, but they're in the right place and I'm going to start drilling holes now. All right, the holes are drilled through the tabs that I've welded onto the cross members and they all line up with the battery box. So that battery will be nice and secure. Attached to the frame is not gonna roll around or bang around in case of some avoidance maneuvers or crashes or anything like that, it should be safe. I'm just gonna give the tabs a little bit of paint and let them cure and then come back to it this afternoon and start bolting things together. All right, so the paint on the battery hold down tabs are, is dry enough. I can continue with this. I have marked four holes on here to match up with holes that I've drilled in the bottom of the box. These are gonna anchor this side of the box down. And I got four bolts holding that battery down, which is also gonna be holding the box down. I'm not worried about having any more on that side. It's gonna be held down plenty tight. So I'm gonna drill these holes out and I'm actually gonna mount this box onto the trailer exciting times. I'm going to use a little bit of thread locker on the threads of the bolts that are holding the box to the trailer just so they don't come undone. I can use lock washers but I already have this stuff. This is a basic battery kit you can buy off of Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. It's great for projects like this. It'll tie a battery down, hold it securely, and stop it from sliding around. So you can get them in all different kinds of battery sizes. The one I got is for a Group 24 battery, and it's gonna mount to the bottom of the box, and it's gonna hold the winch battery in place. These are the nuts that came with a winch. If I'm lucky, it's the same thread. Well, that was a lot of finicking around underneath getting the last two bolts for the winch in, but the winch is now in its final resting place. I'll show you what I got. 
Winch mounted, solid as a rock. Still need to hook up the control box and the electricals. Battery box mounted, ready to go. And there's the box itself mounted to the cross braces that I welded to the trailer frame. It's looking pretty tight. I'm gonna close this up. You hardly even know it's there. Right, well, I'm kind of happy with the progress I've made today. It took a little longer than I thought it would. I'm gonna tackle it again tomorrow. I'm gonna start on the electricals. Who knows, maybe I'll get this thing finished and running. We'll see. Anyways, tomorrow's another day. Well, it's another nice day on the wet coast and I am going to make a final push to get this winch installation finished on my flat deck trailer. I just put the battery in there and I've tightened it down. It's in its spot now. And the next thing I wanna do is wire up the electricals and I'll show you how that's gonna look. So first off here, I have the fuse block for the winch. This looks to be like a combination of three 100 amp resettable fuses, auto resettable fuses. Those are gonna go into the battery, but between this fuse and the battery is going to be this switch. I'm gonna place that on the positive terminal here. Then the fuse block will go here and that's gonna be the main power supply to the actual winch. I want the ability to have the winch only connected to the battery when I'm actually using it. I am also gonna be installing this little gizmo. It is just a little LED readout of the voltage. I wanna have that so I know the condition of the battery before I start using the winch. Then there's the winch controller itself. That needs to be all connected and it's gonna go on the winch itself. But I got a little bit of wiring to figure out first and I'm gonna diagram that for you. So first I have the tow vehicle. Pretend this is my truck. And from the truck I have a positive 12 volt source and ground. Now there's a fuse of 30 amps coming from that and that's what powers the trailer brake controller and then that activates the trailer brakes etc etc so what I've added to the trailer is the battery I'm gonna call that negative also going to use the ground symbol for this stuff so I don't have to draw a bunch of lines and then there's a positive from the battery. Over here, I've got the winch controller, which needs power from the battery when I'm using it. So what I've got to do is provide a way of charging the winch battery when I want to charge it. I don't want to always connect it to the vehicle because that's going to, that's going to possibly drain the, the vehicle battery itself. So. I'm going to take power off of here and I'm going to have a relay that will charge the battery. So this is a relay. There will be a manual switch that I'm going to wire in. So I turn that switch on that will energize the relay connecting the battery to the vehicle's power that'll charge the battery. So I'll have that switch on when I'm driving. Another thing I've got is a voltmeter. I want to be able to turn on the voltmeter to see the status of the battery. But again, I don't want it on all the time. So I will take power off of the winch battery and I'll put a switch in line and that'll go to ground. So when I want to see the state of the battery, I just flip this switch, it'll energize, and it'll show me the charge state of the winch battery. If I leave the power switch off, then that's not gonna influence this reading. It'll show me the true state of the winch battery itself. The last thing I'm gonna wire in, of course, is the big bleep switch to the winch controller. And that's just so the winch isn't always energized when it's connected to the battery, I can just undo that thumb screw you saw on the battery post itself. Then I know that winch isn't gonna get power at any time unless I want it to. Oh, also in here is that big fuse block. 
I think it's 300 amp, but reading the specs on this particular winch, you can draw upwards of 500 amps. They recommend a, recommend a 660 cranking amp battery. So this might even be 600 amps worth of resettable fuse. Who knows? It's gonna be in line and it's gonna protect. It's gonna protect the winch. It's gonna protect the electricals. This 30 amp auto reset fuse here will prevent too much power from being drawn. These are only 10 gauge wires from the battery of the truck. So this is gonna prevent any overload of those wires. If this battery hits a low charge state and starts drawing too much power, that fuse will trip. And that's what I have to wire in now. I think I have the cables on the bottom, which means I need to reverse this bracket so that I can tighten the screws from the top. So it looks like I need a 3 8 or a 10 millimeter. Kind of important to not actually connect anything to the battery until all of the wiring is connected because these wires, if they were live, I could accidentally short across a terminal, they were connected, and that could be a really bad thing. So the battery should be the very last thing to be connected. This is not a good reason why to have a switch on your battery is with these wrenches flying around in such a small space. If this was energized, I could easily tap the ground here and cause a short. Also bad. But because I have this unscrewed, it means it's not live. Once I've proved out the, the actual winch and it working, pulling the car onto the trailer, I'm probably going to shorten these leads. There's a lot of heavy gauge wire just floating around in here, and I'll anchor it properly to the box. But I'll do that once everything works. Okay, so I've got the basic installation done. It should work. There's a charge on the battery. I've got all the winch cables connected. I don't have them organized yet because I just want to prove that the winch works because this is brand new. I've never used it. I'm going to switch the winch to engaged and connect the power by tightening down this knob and the winch should now work. Well, that's disappointing. Time to start troubleshooting. All right, take two, let's try this again. I realized there was one small control wire that I forgot to attach to the ground over there. Let's see if this makes a difference. I'm gonna say yeah, that makes a difference. Very nice. Well, that makes me happy, it works. All I gotta do now is Wiring the charging stuff. Things that I diagrammed, it's time to do that. I gotta make that a reality in there. All right, so underneath the trailer, this is the trailer brake controller and the breakaway system that will activate the brakes if the trailer ever becomes disconnected from the tow vehicle. These are the wires that come from the truck. There's gonna be a ground in there and there's gonna be a positive as well as the control line for the brake controller. I just need to get in here and um, 
take power and ground off of this and then run it back inside the box that I've put here to hold the winch. Well, this is almost gonna be too easy. All I need to do is disconnect whatever terminals I need to, put on a wire of the ring terminal and reconnect it and I can tap power in the ground right out of here and bolt it right back up again. I'm gonna use a hole saw to drill a hole in the bottom corner of the box to allow the wires to come through. And I'm also making it large enough for drainage just in case water does get in here. I want it to be able to drain out easy enough. These grommets are pretty much essential if you're running electrical wires through sheet metal because it'll prevent the insulation from chafing and cutting and possibly causing a short and maybe even a fire. So grab yourself a assortment from Amazon. I'll post a link in the description. These are super handy to have. You use them all over the place. They're cost effective, cheap insurance. Got a ring terminal kit and a good set of crimpers. Don't use the cheap skinny little ones you get for like 10 bucks. Get yourself a good set of crimpers. They'll make all the difference in your connections. All right, I've got power and ground. Power coming from the vehicle at this junction here and ground on this junction here going up underneath into the box through the grommet that I've installed. That gets me power into the winch box. Time to go topside. Well, I've got the panel made. It's a little crude, but it's gonna do the job. I have to do a couple minor adjustments to it tomorrow but I think that's gonna work well. So there'll be the on off switch for charging, the voltage control switch, and we'll do all the wiring, which will be in this area here. I'm gonna do all the wiring, which will be in this area here. I think shouldn't take me too much longer, but as you can tell, I have run out of daylight and it's getting pretty dark. So I'm not gonna continue any further today. It's one of the, one of the downsides of living above the 49th parallel is when winter comes, you lose a lot of daylight real quick. So happy with the panel. I'll get it in tomorrow. It should all be working by tomorrow afternoon. Well, it's done except for the testing. So last night I kind of got bored, but it was too dark to record, but I did the wiring anyways. And to the two people that made it this far in the video, I do apologize. I didn't record me doing the wiring. But let me give you a quick tour of what I did. So I got the positive and negative coming up from the trailer power block in the little uh, box that I showed you down below. We've got it running along here out of the way, tied off and coming down to the power area. I've got a relay here, which is what provides power to the battery when I activate this switch that allows me to choose the time and duration of the charging off of the tow vehicle. I have the actual voltage meter here and if I flip that switch, that will show me the power of the battery. I have it disconnected right now because I haven't tested the relay yet and I'm gonna do that now. As you can see, I've got the tow vehicle, my old 87 F-150 connected to the trailer. It's live. I should be getting a voltage reading at the relay here and at the switch under here, but not here because the relay is turned off. I'm gonna test that right now. So the voltmeter is showing zero volts right now. When I tap the actual power lead, this is coming out of the relay. When I flip the relay switch, the light turns on and I should now have 12 volts at that lead. That works just great. So this means now that if I flip that switch, it's gonna get power from the vehicle. The vehicle will charge this battery. I can turn this switch off. 
so that I know that the, the winch can't draw from the vehicle battery through that skinny little, you know, 30 or 40 amp capable 10 gauge wire and it'll be safe and it won't catch fire. I just have to remember to do that. But I don't have to worry about it because there's that 30 amp auto resettable fuse upstream at the battery. So if I do overload power draw, this light will go out because the fuse up by the battery and the vehicle is going to trip. So there's a bit of safety there. So with the auxiliary power switch off, the battery sits at 12.8 volts. And if I flip it on, connecting it to the engine, you see the power goes up, the voltage goes up to 14.3 volts, which shows me that this will indeed charge the trailer battery when the switch is on. Let me call this done. Last thing to do is actually test using the winch and loading a vehicle on the actual trailer. So here goes nothing, right? Okay, so I'm going to pretend that my Pathfinder is a Jeep and the driver went over a small bump and broke a stub axle and used that to test the loading using the winch that I've just finished putting into my trailer. Well, I'm gonna call that an unbridled success. The winch had no problem pulling this 4,500 pound monster up onto the trailer. And after that load, the battery is still showing 12.4 volts. Well, that was a lot of work and that was a lot of fun. I had a good time figuring this stuff out and it seems to be strong and works great. So if you enjoyed this video, why not mash the like button? If you enjoy this channel, why not subscribe? I got a lot more videos planned, a lot of variety coming up on different projects I want to work on. Regardless, thanks for watching.